Okay, so today I am here with my new friend, Lenny Pratt. And Lenny is the founder of Awakened Self Healing. Um, and Lenny, thank, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate being here. Um, great to um, know you and uh, connect with you. I love your voice, by the way. You oh, have a, thank you a so good, much. Uh, radio voice. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. Um, so you, you founded um, Awakened Self Healing. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about what you do with that. Yeah, so uh, my journey actually started in 2007 uh, when I had um, breast cancer and my kids were nine and three. And so I was very uh, determined to heal. Um, having had uh, very few years with my own mom, you know, I definitely did not want them to suffer that. Um, and I wanted to make sure that, you know, I was present for every important occasion and all that. So anyway, um, I did go through the medical system. I um, had a lumpectomy and radiation, but I declined chemotherapy. And I am so thankful that I did. <laughs> and instead, what I did was um, change my diet, my lifestyle, um, my whole outlook. Uh, the day after I got diagnosed, I started yoga and I didn't know anybody mm -hmm. um, doing yoga. Um, I just, it, you know, it was just a natural pull. Yeah. And so I kind of stuck with it and all that. Um, and from yoga, of course, came breath work, um, meditation, uh, Ayurveda, um, natural healing, um, non-duality or Advaita Vedanta, mm -hmm. and, you know, all kinds of holistic um, healing modalities that I tried, um, you know, including uh, infrared sauna therapy, rebounding, um, you know, uh, Dinacharya, which is an Ayurvedic practice of uh, different um, self-care practices, mm -hmm. tongue cleaning um, and skin, dry skin brushing, things like that. So a lot of the, you know, natural old fashioned um, wisdom from uh, uh, ancient uh, teachings. Mm -hmm. Nice. So did when you when you um, when you were going through the, the the procedure and you were speaking with doctors, did were they encouraging you to get the chemotherapy? Was there? Uh, oh, yes, <laughs> they were. So they yes. were pushing to do that. Yes, in fact, uh, I had to change my oncologist because she had a tantrum and was not accepting that I did not want to do it. And um, we were in a tumor board, which was interesting. A tumor board is like a, a whole bunch of doctors and, you know, from different areas like anesthesiology, oncology, um, radiation. So all the different um, departments that um, is involved with your care. Mm -hmm. And um, and basically the tumor board is like, they study your case and then they come up with options, except there's really no options because there's only one option in the medical system, which yeah. is chemotherapy and there's nothing else. So I was like confused. Why am I, why are we doing this again? Yeah. There's so, no so the, so when you had had the operation, do they do, are they uncertain if all of the cancer is removed? And, and um, is that why they're suggesting chemo? Because they're like, you know, we removed the cancer, but we're not certain that all of it's removed. So they want to do chemo. Is that how they do it? Um, no, actually, the tumor board was even before the surgery. Okay. Right. So um, it's just basically looking at the different options. But like I said, there's no other options except what they, you know, 
normally do, which is, you know, um, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Yeah. So I opted for the first two. Now, they suggested that I do extra radiation because they weren't satisfied with the margins around the tumor. Gotcha. So okay. I had maybe six extra radiation sessions mm -hmm. in addition to the normal. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm glad that you found a, you, you found your way through that and you're, you're healthy and you did it in a natural way. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. And, you know, and that's how Awakened Self Healing was born was because I wanted um, to be like a guide for others um, through this, um, you know, illness journey or cancer journey, whatever. Um, and let them know that it, it's not all um, allopathic uh, medicine that's the only option, right? There are many, many other options and you can even combine them mm -hmm. like, like what I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And um, awakened self-healing, it's because basically you're awakened to the fact that you can self-heal. Right. Right. All healing is really self-healing. You're just allowing the body to self-heal mm -hmm. uh, by uh, providing the circumstances that allow the body to self-heal. Okay. I like that. I like how you said that. That's good. <laughs> so here. So the big thing is, okay, so we're, we're here today to talk about this thing called the toad. Yes. And, and you experience the toad and you, and you were, you were dealing with some, some life crises and, and depression, some anxiety, and you went through this thing called the toad and it's, um, I'm going to let you, it's called it, another way of saying it is the five M E O D M T. I know really nothing about it. I was watching a podcast with with Tony Robbins of all people in Mike Tyson together and they both did the toad and had these really incredible experiences and then I've read I've read a little bit about people having incredible success stories that deal with depression, PTSD, anxiety and um and then we got in touch because I you and I started talking via via Facebook and I realized, oh, wow, you did it. And I read this wonderful article that you wrote about your experience. I'm like, what is the toad? Explain to the viewers, what is the toad? What is 5-MeO-DMT? Uh, okay, so 5-MeO-DMT is the technical term uh, for the substance that is... Um, uh, emitted by the Bufo alvarius toad. Or, okay. Yeah, and it's a Bufo alvarius toad. Yes. Where are they? Where are they found? So they're found in the Sonoran Desert. Okay. Uh, in Mexico and I believe Arizona as well. Okay. Um, and it's kind of controversial right now because because of its popularity, um, people are discouraging um, getting the, the substance from the toad because there's, of course, abuse, right, when it becomes that popular. Yeah. So people are encouraging to get the synthetic version because the synthetic ver version is exactly the same except it doesn't have the other alkaloids that the natural substance has. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there something? No. Is there something missing or viable from the 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 actual substance to the synthetic one? Do you? Are no, you, most people really? can't even tell the difference. Okay. Uh, there are some alkaloids, but they're very negligible. You know. Okay. Yeah. So this substance is basically milked from the parotid glands of the toad, uh, and they are basically pressed onto 
uh, when you press the, those glands, uh, the substance goes, is basically um, secreted and it's placed on like a glass, um, uh, like a rectangle glass that then it's allowed to dry. And mm -hmm. then when it's dry, that is basically what you smoke. Mm -hmm. Does it dry on something? Does it on dry? that glass? That glass um, contraption. Okay. Yeah. So, so the venom itself becomes kind of like a form of something that can be smoked. Yeah. Once it's dried. Once it's dried yes. Okay, that's interesting. Is, did you did you um, do the the actual venom substance, or did you do the synthetic? The actual substance from the did. okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how what led you to um, what was going on in your life that led you down a path to go. This is something that I've read about, and I think I I really need to try it or experience this. this I don't know what what led you to that. To the yes. So. Um... I don't know, met some people who know me, know me. I, I've had a lot of trauma in my childhood, um, but I thought I was over that. Um, but then I, in the last recent years, I've also had a bunch of traumatic experiences and, you know, it's kind of hard to go into that right now, but it, you know, like yeah. this year, 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18. And I guess in, from my perspective, um, a human can only take so much, you know? And uh, I felt that I needed like a reset button uh, to release all these pent up tension in my body, uh, all these kind of um, uh, trauma that's um, lodged into my cells. Okay. Because the body remembers all of that yeah um and it's inside you right so it there has to be some release of some sort right and um uh it was by chance when i was talking to a friend of mine and she was saying that oh yeah i'm i'm gonna have this mdma assisted psychotherapy i'm like wow oh i didn't know you could use something like that for therapy mm -hmm. and so that's when i researched and, you know, people have been using all kinds of different entheogens to help them with healing, with... Um, when you said, what, did you said entheogen? Entheogens, yes. Yeah, what is that? What's... So entheogens are substances that are basically uh, allow you to experience a direct connection with source consciousness. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole bunch of entheogens that are uh, have been used by indigenous tribes, um, you know, uh, ancient cultures, uh, and in each region, uh, each country would have their own version of entheogens. Um, so, for example, the mushroom would be uh, the most popular one. Uh, mm -hmm. by the um, South American and Mexican cultures. Mm -hmm. the psilocybin. Psilocybin mm -hmm. mushrooms. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then ayahuasca, obviously, is from South America and Amazon. Yeah. Ayahuasca, peyote, what you have. Yeah. Okay. From there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what was going on in your life that you said this is somewhere i what what were you experiencing what kind of emotions or feelings were getting in your way in everyday life where you said i gotta i gotta try something i gotta try yeah. this um i was feeling very um, uncomfortable um and easy and easy with myself um i had a lot of anxiety Mm -hmm. um, and really the telltale was my right eye was quivering mm -hmm. 
And I said, wow, what is this, right? Something in my nervous system is not balanced. Oh, geez, that happens to me quite often. <laughs> With eyes like quivering. Yeah, so, you know, the body is um, communicating to you. Sure, yeah. Right? The, it's it's like a mirror, right? Like there's something there that needs attention and it needs uh, some way to balance itself. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't intentionally um, think, oh, I'm going to do this and hallucinogenic thing. And you know, that, that was not my intention. It, I was looking for something, but then my friend mentioned this uh, MDMA assisted mm -hmm. psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. And that's when it brought brought it to my attention and and that's when i researched um all of these things that are being used for therapy yeah uh, clinical trials all over the world and yeah just a lot of research um and yeah and and i always like thought like why would they be prohibited right so yeah, and that's interesting, and we all know why. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's because um, a lot of the, um, um, I guess, vested interest in this kind of healing is, you know, um, counterproductive to their business. So it's, you know, it's hard to um, uh, fight the the big companies. Yeah, unless they get their hands in it. Oh, which, yes, is, which is what's happening, yes. <laughs> you know, which is what's happening. So you didn't have like any kind of rock bottom moment or anything where you said, okay, man, I'm really down. I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly depressed. I just need to go there and try this thing to see if it fixes me. You didn't have any of that. Um, no, I wasn't really like, I was close to rock bottom. Okay. And I was like super uneasy about, you know, everything about my life, my body, like everything was just, I was just in anxious mode. Um, mm -hmm. Mild depression, not necessarily, you know, severe depression, but um, more high anxiety. Anxiety. Um, Were you taking any medication for the anxiety? No, no, no. You weren't. I was taking ashwagandha, you know, things like yeah, that. Yeah, ashwagandha, okay. All right, so then you, so you, you tried this, this, um, 5-MeO DMT, and you you had a profound experience. I did, yes. You had a profound experience. I so did. I'm really interested in you sharing what that experience is like, building up to the point of when you're doing it and going mm -hmm. through it. Um, are you comfortable talking about that? Yeah. Um, okay. I... <laughs> okay. So you're going to share with us your experience with the toad and <laughs> your yes. profound experience with the toad it was it was like life changing for you it was life changing yes yeah okay so so how did it go what happened okay well um i had learned that there was a ayahuasca re retreat that was being offered in oakland mm -hmm. and so i inquired um, and in that retreat, they also offered um, the bufo, a various toad, um, and cambo. Um, so going into the retreat, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it, but like it was most likely I was going to do it, but I wasn't sure till I was there, like if I had trusted the facilitators enough or comfortable enough to do it. Um, and I did. So um, the first night was ayahuasca with um, five, uh, four other participants. Mm -hmm. And we started around eight, eight, between eight and 9 p.m. And it was a really nice ceremony, very intimate and, um, you know, with candles and music and really sacred setting. Um, and then uh, we had ayahuasca and, uh, you know, interestingly, my ayahuasca experience um, wasn't really 
uh, remarkable. It was, uh, I had, I was kind of, um, you know, I had a lot of bodily uh, sensations and discomfort. And of course I did purge, um, mm -hmm. but nothing earth shattering, right? Like others would um, experience, but maybe it prepared me for the next day, which mm -hmm. was the next day was combo in the morning and combo is like a detox um they it's this one is frog medicine where they puncture holes on your skin so they punctured three holes um on my right shoulder mm. they apply the frog medicine there and before yeah they apply the frog frog medicine and they um uh, ask you to drink you know, maybe two, three liters of water in, mm -hmm. in a span of 15 minutes. And then again, you purge and it's supposed to release a lot of toxins from your uh, digestive tract. Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoon was when the bufo was offered. Um, and it's basically um, a substance where it was kind of like a powdery substance and um, they put it in a pipe and then they light it up and you're supposed to inhale when they tell you. The, so the, the bufo is the, the toad? The bufo is the toad, yeah. The 5-MeO-DMT, okay. Yes. Um, and so um, it was first my friend who did it um, and, uh, you know, we were just basically witnessing her uh, do that and um, and then I was next <laughs> so I was a little nervous I would actually I was very nervous <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because I had read a lot about it I did uh, a lot of research um, and you know it's definitely uh, something that's um, one of those peak experiences like sure. I guess bungee jumping or uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. skydiving, right? Something yeah. like that. Um, and so I did a little bit of breath work first um, to calm my nerves. So explain a little bit, Le Lenny, explain a little bit like what you read, because when you do read about it, it's, it's wild what people experience. It's like a, it's, they have a, a um well it's like a a, a death death like experience you like yeah. you pass away then you come back and it's and it's yeah so what were you reading because i read i read some of that and i'm like going wow this this sounds like it's really potent but where people are going and what they're experiencing coming out is unbelievable yeah. so yeah what were you reading about it i mean Mm, well, I read a lot of uh, Martin Ball's um, experiences. He he was a facilitator of uh, the toad uh, medicine for many years, um, and he's already stopped doing that. So he's out in the open. He has books and all. Mm. Um, and you know the experiences vary um, a whole lot too from person to person right and it also varies depending on the dose mm -hmm. and it also varies depending on how how much surrendered you are sure right are you ready to surrender you know are you ready to die before you die <laughs> are you ready to surrender yeah 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 um, and, uh, you know, I felt I was ready. Like I felt that wow. um, I, you know, I, I needed this reset button to, to help me, um, get out of my funk. Yeah. And, um, so you yeah. were really mentally prepared. Well, I mean, yeah, the, just the, I the, like, I love what you just said to die before you die. I mean, to, to get, get to that place of surrender, just to let go. There's no fight. There's no resistance. There's mm -hmm. nothing. I'm not going to, that's scary. That's a scary place to be. It was, it was scary. 
Um, but having said that, um, I also, having done a lot of research about it, um, have um, realized or read, uh, found out that there's nobody who, ha who has died from this, mm -hmm. except for two people who did it in a uh, hot tub. So, I mean, that's... <laughs> So what, did they, did, what did they do they drown yes right they drown yeah okay yes. yeah they went under once they passed out why would you do that right not very smart so anyway yeah um so there's no um recorded deaths from this mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. an ego death i guess yeah so then you took the you took the the hit the, the, yes. is it a big hit or is it a small little so we were i was instructed by the facilitator to basically um inhale very slow and long so that means uh the timing should be i should be exhaling when he's already lighting it up because it maybe it takes a few seconds to sort of create that smoke so when you see the smoke is when you start inhaling very slowly i see okay and so what do you remember after that so i remember that i was going to i felt like i was going to purge so i was like saying like something like i need my plastic bag right because mm -hmm. we all had one and um is that common with the toad for people that want they feel like they need to throw up um i i guess so i guess see the thing is i think that it's common if you ate hmm. if your stomach was empty you wouldn't feel that sure okay but since it was afternoon i had eaten like a piece of fruit in the morning mm -hmm. so maybe that I, i'm not sure okay um but anyway that was the last thing i remembered and the next thing that when i came to was i was in bliss and like in you know um just profound euphoria <laughs> like this is creation and i am part of this creation <laughs> like mm -hmm. um it's just no words really can explain it but um it was just you know a feeling of bliss and like um awe reverence like mm -hmm. you know just really profound reverence for the all of creation wow so that and this was after did, did you like after after you inhaled the um the toad that you did you pass out or did you go out or were you aware of were you conscious of what was happening around you no not at all i was not conscious at all um so in that span of time between you know feeling like i wanted to purge you know yeah. calling out for my for my plastic bag and that feeling of bliss with hearing the music and being in awe of creation and all that, that length of time maybe was, I'm guessing 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I was told that I was screaming my head off. Okay, so you were awake, you weren't out. I was out, I didn't know that. You didn't know that you were screaming. I did not know that I was screaming. Wow. You had no recollection of that. No recollection at all. So where do you think you were, your mind was, when you're you're screaming and yelling and you're not even aware you're doing it? Where do you think? I was merged with all of creation. Yeah. That's the best I can describe it as. Yeah. Uh, and physically, though, Obviously, with the screaming, my assumption is that my body was releasing the trauma. Sure. Was purging pain. Yes. 
suffering, whatever, all of those things that have been built up over decades. So how long did they say that you were screaming and yelling? And then how long did that take before you came out of that and you were clear and conscious again? Right. So I, my guess is between 15 to 20 minutes okay. or 10 to 15 minutes. I'm not sure, but yeah, um, I really didn't know that I was screaming. I thought I was purging. Yeah. But I, I guess it, you could say I was purging energetically. Yeah. Right? yeah. So the, the funk that you felt, the depression, the anxiety, the c- continuous anxiety, that you felt did this work yes yes it did it took me out of that funk um like it wasn't like a hundred percent right but i would say like maybe mm, 15 20 percent was left Uh uh-huh right out of that so yeah yeah, it it was so in like so like you were at a point where you were almost like kind of like rock bottom, constant anxiety, this constant pressure twitching in your face. You do the toad and all of a sudden that, and, and then you have this incredible, you euf- profound euphoric experience. But then usually like days later, people return back to normal. Mm-hmm. Did you ever return back to normal? Or did it just kind of really, truly reset? Um. I think it was both. There mm-hmm. was that reset um, portion. And then I, d- I also was conscious enough that like I needed to ground myself, right? Like, you know, yes, I know that experience was just um, life-changing, but I, kn- I also knew that I had to integrate and make sure that I was grounded with, um, you know, the practices that I have been doing Mm -hmm. um, and making sure that, you know, I'm not, um, you know, um, changing my life overnight, making rash decisions and all that. So my friend and I started attending integration circles. Okay. That was really helpful you know, being able to share the experience, being able to be in community, sharing and hearing other people's experience, experiences with, you know, with the toad also or with other substances. Yeah. And the integration circles, I mean, how, what, what are they, how do they help you? What's the. Uh, yeah. So integration circles allow you to um, share your experience, allow you to be um, heard and witnessed and um, exchange information, exchange experiences. Mm-hmm. And do you share any of the, do you share any of the, like the, the, you take away something from that experience what you know that you you you, it's almost like you you left your ego behind and became connected to just beyond every but you're just so you're you're connected so so you're not yourself any longer you're just connected i mean do, do you guys talk about the the is there a way to practice those concepts that you experienced through the ritual is there you know what i mean by that well um i think i had mentioned to you that i have been studying yoga uh you know breath work meditation um non-duality ayurveda since 2007 Mm -hmm. so my toad experience was 2019 Mm-hmm. And so I have all this background that um, was became like the framework for, okay. for my experience. And so that's why I'm in this uh, space right now, um, helping others prepare and integrate um, these kinds of experiences uh, because I want to be uh, a bridge 
to that gap. Yeah. I imagine that um, many try entheogenic substances and they don't have that yoga background or non-duality. Um, and it could be very jolting, um, you know, very disconcerting for them to experience something like that. So, you know, I can only imagine that, um, yeah, it's it's not, um, it could be very ungrounding for someone. Yeah. Not do you, prepared. Do you feel like this could be an answer for a lot of people, a lot of depression and anxiety and PTSD sufferers? I feel like, um, for many, yes, um, but I, I don't feel like uh, it is for everyone. I think, you know, with proper preparation, with proper framework, um, many could be ready, right? Mm -hmm. um, some people just want a drive-by or a fast food type of experience, and, and that's not what this is. Sure, right? um, sure. So who, who sh in your opinion, who shouldn't do this? Who shouldn't try it? And can, and can people that do take like medication for depression or anxiety, can they do it on their medication or do they need to go off it? Yes, they do need to go off it. Okay. Yes. So people on meds typically can't do this. Right, they right. should try it. Depends okay. on which meds, but yes. Um, they could, however, microdose, um, and it's been um, proven that microdosing, because it's very, very small amounts, that it's not uh, dangerous. Um, and uh, uh, with higher doses, though, it's not advisable to, to do that when, when you're on meds. Also, um, contraindications, right? Like, um, yeah, sure. Psychosis, mental issues like schizophrenia, things like that, um, bipolar, um, not advisable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So, well, wow. <laughs> what a great, what an amazing experience that you had. And you still feel the effects of it today, where your anxiety isn't as intense. Yes. And you feel much more grounded. Yes. yes. All from just that one experience. Well, yeah. <laughs> I have been uh, microdosing um, here and there. Not okay. Um, and also I've been doing a lot of, um, you know, my other practices, right? My breath sure. work, uh, meditation, yoga, asanas. Um, and of course, I study and teach non-duality or what's called Advaita Vedanta, mm -hmm. which is um, ancient wisdom from uh, the most old, the oldest books in history called the Vedas mm -hmm. um, from India. Uh, so yeah, so I definitely like, um, you know, the, the formula for healing is not just the ceremony itself but that ceremony is only one tenth of the formula once the ceremony ends is when the real work begins okay applying it into your daily life right yeah so you don't want anybody to walk away with the idea that the toad is going to cure you from any ailment that you're dealing with mm -hmm. Or the toad or any other um, any other entheogenic substance. Yeah. Okay. You don't think that there's a one, like I've heard people say, oh, I, I did ayahuasca and it cured me. And I don't know about that, but yeah. <laughs> I have, people have said stuff like that. And I'm like, wow, they really had a truly profound experience if they dealt with all kinds of suffering and pain and then did a, did a had an ayahuasca experience and it removed all of the suffering and pain that's pretty profound yeah maybe you know like short-lived yeah right like because you know we're we're all kind of a work in progress right as long yeah. as we're here we're you know there's no up all the time it's always up and down right it's not sure 
yeah mark <laughs> all right well that's really that's really all i had um is there anything else that we could you wanted to cover um um no could... that, it's just that um i am available for um you know uh, guidance and uh, consultation um, preparing for uh, entheogenic experiences um, and even without entheogenic experiences I teach um, Advaita Vedanta non-duality which is actually in and of by itself um, it, an awakening process Mm -hmm. right and when when somebody awakens then you you um, get to a place where you become free or you transcend the suffering um earthly suffering um because we have then uh, attained some sort of um, realizations about ourselves mm -hmm. um without attachment without aversions without judgment um and without resistance so just accepting life as is um and uh, knowing that you are not the body and the mind <laughs> that mm -hmm. you are uh there is no individuated self this mm -hmm. is just a costume all right well thank you so much lenny pratt for being here today and sharing your experience and, and all this information. We'll put your all, all the contact information at the end of the podcast so people can find you. Um, and, um, and any other links you want to share, we'll include. And, uh, but thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. This is my first interview on this. So <laughs> you're very, you're very good. <laughs> Fantastic. And I really appreciate you sharing the your experience with with um you know the toad the five meo dmt and and your journey and and how and and now how you're helping other people and people that are dealing with some of the same issues that you dealt with mm -hmm. that's that's awesome thank you so much it's such yeah. a well you have a great evening and uh we'll be in touch okay yes thank you yep. take care yes.